Hello, welcome to Beth Roars, where we look at your favourite singers to find out what makes them them. This video is in association with Skillshare. I keep on working with Skillshare as they have loads of great classes on lots of different topics. It's great for a multi-interested person like me, and I liked it so much that I even gifted a membership to my sister for her birthday. Skillshare was a great gift as they offer thousands of inspiring classes covering topics like painting. Personally, I enjoyed the Beyond Watercolour class with Leah Gorin to logo design, from photography to typography and from self-discovery to discovering your creative voice and, of course, singing. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule, which is really handy for a busy creative and there are classes for every skill level so if you want to learn something new or already have a knowledge base there is something for you normally this is all only ten dollars a month but the first 1000 to click on the link in the description will get a free trial of skillshare premium membership so many of you guys have asked for this in the comments i just had to have a look at it this is a genuine first time reaction i have never listened to rainbow although of course i have listened to ronnie james dial before but more in his black sabbath days so let's give it a listen What an epic drum solo to start on. So the drummer is Cozy Powell. Cozy? Is that how you say his name? known as one of the most influential rock singers of all time and there might be a reason for this now you can hear it he his voice is so balanced but his voice is really intentional there is so much going on in terms of tone when he's using clean singing when he's using distortion where he's using vibrato where he's taking it off he is using these as colors to paint this picture and this is a very um it's a storytelling song so he has a lot to portray, but he does that so well throughout these nuances. He has so much tone in that higher range, which is really, really rare. Often our voices lighten off as we get higher, and actually that's kind of what you want to attempt to do. However, he is maintaining a lot of those lower frequencies, and partially that's down to the shape that he's creating in his mouth, and partially that could just be down to the makeup of his instrument as well, the shape and the space that he has already in his vocal tract. However, he's definitely making more of that, especially on vowels like an E, it's less wide and more of an E, like a longer shape and a little bit darker sounding so you get that real heavy low frequency uh, sound. So I love how he uses consonants and vowels in a really, really interesting way. So he'll be like, fly, he really pronounces every single letter in a word. So for example, if he was saying the word black, he would be like black and you'd get, you wouldn't say it with the bl and going through all those consonants, but he says every single kind of 
syllable and letter that you possibly could and that it makes a really distinctive sound but also it brings clarity to the sound that you wouldn't get otherwise Okay, so there's a couple of things there on go. He, he just does so much great technical singing. He is moving from an O to slightly more towards an A. Uh, go! Not too wide, so he's not like, go! Go! To keep it nice and open, nice and free, a little bit easier, morphing those vowels sometimes, but also his breath support is fantastic. Now, what is breath support? And a lot of people think that it is squeezing that breath out, which isn't necessarily what you want. Actually, what breath support kind of should be is a nice relaxed breath in and then slowly, slowly letting that air out. Just letting that air out like, I almost think it's like a string of air coming out of your mouth and you want it to be slow and steady and even without any wobbles and that is what a lot of breath support and breathing exercises are about more than anything, more than keeping a really really long note, it's about keeping it nice and even so that your breath isn't wobbling underneath you because then you're going to get a wobbly note. <laughs> Whereas he was like pitch perfect. Again, using like onomatopoeic, I don't know if that's a real word, but he's using words that sound like the meaning, but he's expressing them in that way, like hot, fast, making it sound hot and fast. It's really important to note that although his voice sounds massive, he is not pushing. It doesn't sound like strained at any point. It sounds relaxed. It sounds really easy for him. Those distortions are happening above the vocal cords, I think. So it's it's not got um, a feeling of squeeze in it. It has a feeling of almost classical singing because it is so open but with extreme diction in there so you're getting this amazing story about a wizard happening in it and you know a lot of their music has a lot of morals in so that's great that you can hear absolutely everything with whips and chains, just to see him fly. Forever, so good. The guitar is loving this. Switchy Blackmore. It's like you're taken into a dream, isn't it?
Okay, I'm going to stop because I, I know it's in the middle of a guitar solo. Everyone's going to hate me. But I want to talk about his guitar solo, what he's doing so well. And you only really get this with amazing guitarists is that he's not overdoing it. He knows the moments to pair it back and make it a simple melody. And then he shows off and then he pairs it back again. And it really takes you on this journey. Often when people and singers first start out, and especially if they have a lot of skill, I feel like people just overdo it and they throw everything into their, their songs. But for me, I love it when people bring it back to simplicity and then those moments of showing off really mean something. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I want to talk about here about this er sound. So wizard or world, um, a lot of Americans would have a rhotic R in their accent. That was probably a terrible accent. I'm very sorry for you all. Um, but he's saying wizard, like a U-H, and world. And that just keeps it that little bit more open. And R sound is when your tongue, for some people, it might pull back into a little bunch. And for others, it might make a little a little kind of cup um, at the front and flick up forward. Either way, this can get in the way of that airflow and um, you don't really want that when you're singing, especially when you're singing high. So um, leaving that er sound off and making it into an uh wizard then it makes it a lot easier. This is a time to be a little bit British on it. Um, but also he's got great tone, as I said earlier, and this comes from his chord closure. Now, breathy tones can be good, um, dependent on the style, but for this, again, it requires so much clarity to tell that story, and it's just part of kind of metal to have like strong tone. And to get that strong tone, you need full chord closure. You need your vocal cords to meet fully. And for some people, this can take a bit of work, a bit of training. Some people, it comes really, really naturally too. To him, it sounds so balanced. The way that he's getting onto notes, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. I think it's just natural for him. No sound as he falls. Instead of rising, time standing still. Then there's blood on the sand. Blood on the oh, See those consonants again? Interesting. So he's doing a few different things on how he gets onto notes. Generally, when it's a consonant, he's letting some of the air build up behind the consonant to make it a bit stronger, apart from on Fs, they were quite soft. Um, with vowels, he's doing two different things. And um, I want you to look out for this in your singing. Sometimes he's using a glottal, which is an uh sound, in. And that gives it a little bit of a punch. And he only uses that when he wants to. Most of the time he's using a simultaneous onset is what it's called for being fancy. So you're just singing at the same time as a breath. In, in, without the in, in, in. Hear the difference between the two? They're not always 100% the easiest thing for your voice and can be a little bit tiring. So as a baseline, ideally you want to be on like a simultaneous onset and then you can use those glottals to give it real punch in, the, in those moments that you want it stylistically. And he also does some cool things coming off notes, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. Okay, so there's a perfect example. Cute stone, he does all these slides off. It makes it feel kind of 
oozy and dynamic but then when he really wants to make a feature of things oh, he will keep that note going he'll keep it flat and he'll put a big vibrato on so he's trying lots of different ways of coming off the note dependent on what he is expressing what that lyric is and he's using those lyrics to help him decide what vocal nuances he's going for is he going for that glottal onset is he going for a breathy tone is he sliding off is he doing um a big vibrato on that held note it's very <laughs> Why? Cool distortion. Fresh and bone. So good, isn't he? That tone, that vibrato, that ease of the designer. Okay, this is something that is a pet peeve of mine, not him, that other people do, and he's doing it so well, is that people saying like an O oh, and they don't mean anything with it. I feel like if you write an O oh or an A ah or any sort of emotional exclamation in your song, then you have to sing it as an emotional exclamation. And there, the O, oh, it sounds like it's coming from his emotion, which is really important. Whereas people often in a lot of music will be like, oh, oh, I'm like, what is that there for? I'm, I, I feel like for me, my personal taste is that everything kind of has to come from an emotional place. And if it doesn't, then for me, I find it obsolete. And I love like big fancy singers who are able to do big riffs and runs, but then it becomes boring to me if it's just a show off. But it's possible to show off like he is doing here and it to feel emotional. There it goes again. The reason that he is called one of the most influential rock singers of all time is because he has such a distinct style that has um, become synonymous with an era of metal and he combines technicality with amazing storytelling and often people are one or the other but to get true legendary status then you have to have more than one of these and that is why. He's awesome. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.